Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you for the response. It's nice to see all of you here this morning. I thought when Bud announced that I would be speaking today, that, uh, well, you know, the crowd might be a tad bit sparse. So thanks for coming, in view of the fact that you've been forewarned. I was called to be the pastor of the Grace Brethren Church of Canton, Ohio, when the pastor here was a man by the name of Charles Ashman. So if you remember that, that's got to be more than uh, 60 years ago. And I was reminiscing with Eric a little bit how things have changed a little bit. So over the last 60 years, um, well, one of the things that's changed, I've got a, an iPad here. It has, uh, I suppose another step would be to have my whole sermon on that, but it does at least have Bible verses and scripture for me that I can check with. Another change, a tremendous change, is the fact that the bulletin has my sermon in it. Did you notice that? If you look at the bulletin, I, I know Bud has you uh, trained to fill in blanks and to follow the uh, bulletin. And so actually what we could do now is just fill in the blanks and go home. <laughs> Would you all be in favor of that? Well, I've been, uh, I've been listening to uh, messages. Sometimes you hear messages that are an hour long. Sometimes you hear messages that are 20 minutes long. And uh, since sometimes I've been sitting in the pew, you know which ones I like better. Unfortunately, this one may be a little bit longer than 15 minutes. But again, I'll encourage you to take your pencils and follow with us in the outline. I've entitled my message this morning, Some Things Every Christian Should Understand. And as I've been thinking about that and pondering over the content of the message, I was thinking maybe I could change that and put four things that you should have been told when you became a Christian. Four things that were shared with you when you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. Uh, but at either, at either uh, title that we use, uh, it should be of interest to you. I'd like to first of all start by reading from the uh, text, 2 Timothy 2, 1 to 7. So if you have your Bibles there, I'd invite you to turn to 2 Timothy chapter 2, and we'll read verses 1 to 7. I'll be reading from the authorized version. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strives for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. I'd like to begin by making some observations from verse 7 and conclude by making some observations from verse 1. So it'll be a little bit backwards, but that's how it'll go. In verse 7, there are two words there that I count important, more important than others, the word consider and the word understanding. First of all, let's look at the word consider. Consider, what the apostle is asking us here to do is to stand still and consider. Just Take a few minutes, pause, and think of some things that, well, let's say that God has done for you. Uh, I think we live in a day, whenever we're in so, so much of a hurry, that for us to stand still would put us behind. Do you ever feel that way? Uh, we're, we're too busy. It was Job who said in verse, or chapter 37 and verse 4, stand still and consider. So my desire this morning is that as Christians, we might stand still and consider. And so while we're here this morning in our worship service, we're going to consider some things 
of God and some things from God's word. Then he has the word understanding here. The Lord give the understanding. Of course, people who are not believers cannot understand God's word. For God's word is written on a spiritual plane and it is spiritually inspired. And if you're not a believer, if you do not have the Lord Jesus or the, if you don't have the Holy Spirit living within you, you cannot understand God's word. But as believers, I'm sure that you can. And so we pray this morning that God will give us understanding in his word. All right. Let's get to the, uh, to the text. In verses 1 to 6, I've just talked about verse 7, and I'm going to do one at the end. In verses 1 to 6, there are four things that we have to comprehend. The first thing you need to know as a believer, you should have been told, the strategic nature of the Christian position. Uh, let's see, so far I've got that on the bulletin. Uh, let me read verse 2 again. Uh, verse 2, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. You know, if you are a Christian, you are in a measure responsible for propagating the truth, the word of God. I have in the bulletin here, Christians are seen here as links in a chain. Links in a chain. You are as links in a chain, verse 2. You see, the truth is given to Paul. Paul gives it to Timothy. Timothy gives it to faithful men. Faithful men shall be able to teach others also. In other words, every soul one is a new center of influence. In John chapter 1 and verse 40, it was Andrew who found the Lord Jesus. And you know the first thing he did? He went and got his brother Peter. So from one to another to another to another. So if you are saved, if you are a believer, you're simply a link in a chain and you are to share with someone else the faith, the message that you have in Christ. There will be people tomorrow morning that you will see and you'll know and you'll meet and you'll talk to that I will never be able to talk to them. I don't know them. And others in here don't know them, but you know them. And you are responsible for sharing the message that you have received as a believer. Every Christian occupies a strategic position. Let's notice Timothy's time of getting this charge. In verse 2, we read again, in the presence of many witnesses. Evidently, it was at the time of his ordination. We have ordination services here where we have someone comes up and the, some of the elders of the church come and put their hands on them and pray. But it's in the presence of everyone here, in the presence of many witnesses, a solemn service, a public conveyance to Timothy of the Christian doctrine. It was for the dissemination of the truth that Timothy set apart. So if he ever wavered, if he ever turned away from the truth that he had, been, that he had received, there would be plenty of witnesses against him. The responsibility is again, passed, is, is again pressed upon him in verse 2. The same commit thou. You see, we commit the deposit of ourselves to God, and God commits it to faithful men whose integrity and fidelity can be relied upon. So here is the way it goes. Able men are to teach others also, and such is the church advanced, instructed, and organized. Let me suggest that this responsibility is not just upon the leaders or the elders of the church, but it's upon every individual. This is how the church is advanced. It is by this human agency that the way, the truth, and the life is to be disseminated abroad. Let's see if I got that. Okay, I have in the bulletin, every soul one is a new center of influence. I guess you got that. Then I've got verses down there. I'll tell you about those verses in a minute. Uh, it's time for a couple stories. The story is told of how the Lord Jesus, after his ascension, went back to heaven and was telling the archangel about how he had come to earth 
how he lived here, he suffered, he died, he was crucified, and if men would accept him as their savior, they could have their sins forgiven and go to heaven. And the archangel said to the Lord Jesus, well, how is mankind to find out about that? And the Lord Jesus said, oh, I have a small band of men, and I've commissioned them to share that with everybody else. And the archangel said, well, how about if they fail? What if they don't do their job? You know what God said? I have no other plan. Man is God's method. If man fails, God has no other plan. He looks to us. So my question is, how have we been doing? Why not? Another story, the missionary was talking with a native. And the missionary was telling the native how that the Lord Jesus loved us so much that he came to earth and died and paid for our sins. And the native said to the missionary, well, when did all this happen? Oh, the missionary said, some 2,000 years ago. You're just now coming and telling us? Why so long? Why not? The commission is urgent. The plan is clear. The responsibility is heaven. All this places the Christian in a position of strategic importance. And I've got these two verses, Matthew 5:14. Ye are the light of the world. We read that often and glibly catch on, I guess, or leave it go. But we need to recognize that the Lord Jesus calls us to be the light of the world, to share with others the message of salvation. In John 15 and verse 27, we read, Ye also shall bear witness. So here's the next thing you could fill in. The Lord Jesus uses the word of God by the spirit of God through the man of God. He uses the word of God by the son of God. I'm sorry, by the spirit of God through the man of God. Trust that that at least shows some indication of the strategic nature that you possess as a believer. The second thing you should understand, the strenuous nature of the Christian life. Uh, it should be obvious to each one of us, if you read your scriptures, that you know that New Testament Christianity is not an easy sit-at-home uh, chair religion, but it's a thoroughly vigorous affair. It's true it has its quiet, say, the quiet side, and it's true that we spend time in meditation, in reading the scriptures, but that's only that we might uh, move on and get out and do something. It was energetic Paul who says, study to be quiet, but only in order that you may be equipped for the fray. The hide thyself of 1 Kings 18 is only so that you may show thyself a little bit later. The stand still of Exodus 14 is followed by go forward. The wait of, of Acts 1-4 is followed by go forward. So we treasure the quiet time, it's true, but the Christian life is a strenuous business as the apostle shows by three figures here in our text. Let's notice verse 4. In verse 4 he has, He that warreth. Hmm. That sounds like a soldier to me. Uh, yeah. It's true a soldier has his times of rest and sleep and ease, but the word used here is that of a soldier who's on the front line, not someone's on furlough. Such is the apostle's conception of a Christian life. He's not looking for any demobilization. So long as we remain here, we are on active duty. This is the implications of the picture. So when he thinks of a Christian, 
he thinks of a soldier. So what I want you to do now is picture the life of a soldier and know that the apostle compares that to the life of a believer. The second one is in verse 5. He says, strive for the masteries. Strive for the masteries? That sounds to me like an athlete. So you have an A there for an athlete. Not certain whether he's talking about a runner here or a uh, track runner or a wrestler. But at any rate, there's an energetic figure. Muscles all strained, ready to go. In Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12, we read that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but you know the rest of it. We are in a wrestling match as a believer. In Hebrews 12, 1, it says, run with patience. The race that is set before us, with patience, reminds us that we have a, it's not a sprint, it's a long job, long run. Daniel chapter 1 and verse 8, he purposed in his heart. Some would be a big success if it were a short race, but it's, we're to, be keep, we're to keep on keeping on. A third example or illustration of the Christian is found in verse 6. He talks here about the husbandman. That sort of sounds to me like a farmer. So you have in your bulletin the farmer. Got to turn my page. Well, there's no doubt in Paul's view of the Christian life that it's a strenuous matter. Matthew 20 and verse 6 says, Why stand ye here all the day idle? God wants workers, not shirkers. All right, number three. The third thing that you should know as a believer is the sacrificial nature of the Christian experience. In Matthew 16 and verse 24, Christ said, If any will come after me, let him deny himself and follow me. In verse 3, we see there are things to be put up with. He says, endure hardness. Remember Paul's soldier? It was not a peacetime, but war was on. Rough, fair battle conditions. We need not be surprised at this, for if the Christian soldier has an easy time of it, you wonder if there's something wrong. Is he being as all out as he should be for the Lord Jesus? He's not alone in this. Number two, verse four, there are things to be avoided. That would be the affairs of this life. Paul's time here, uh, in, in Paul's time, there was no such thing as a standing army. It wasn't quite like it is today. Dr. Alexander McLaren indicates that in Paul's time, uh, there was no standing army. Uh, you were called from your avocation at home to go to battle. They left all as it was. So they were not allowed to get so entangled in civilian interests that when they, they needed all their energies devoted to the war, they had to give up all that would prejudice their soldiering. So the Christian is to give up things that are not wrong in themselves, but they are an entanglement to him being a believer, to getting a way of success. Anything that interferes with our being the best that we can needs to be sacrificed. Reminds me of what the Apostle Paul said in Corinthians. If eating meat was a stumbling block to his brother, he would not eat meat. In itself, there wasn't anything wrong with eating meat, but if it's a stumbling block. So I suggest that there are things that not, there's nothing wrong with them in themselves, but if they interfere with our being the best we can as believers, they are to be sacrificed. The third thing is in verse 5. We find the words, strive lawfully. There are things to be obeyed. Strive lawfully. The Christian can't do as he likes any more than the athlete can do as he likes. He has to follow the rules. In the case of the Greek games, only those who were true-born Greeks could compete in the arena. No, 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 no one else was allowed. So in the Christian race... The only ones that can compete are those who have confessed Christ Jesus 
as their Savior. By this, uh, Paul impresses the sacrificial nature of the life to which we are called. By these implications, Paul impresses upon us the sacrificial nature of a believer. In John chapter 3 and verse 30, we read, I must decrease, but he must increase. Number four, the fourth thing we need to be reminded of is the satisfying nature of the Christian service. And then I have put here in the bulletin Romans chapter 8 and verse 18, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, does anybody relate to that? Does anybody understand anything about suffering or pain? I appreciate your intercession and prayers on my behalf. And there was at least one person told me this morning that they were praying that I would be able to make it, stand up here and make it through the message. And I appreciate that and, and others. Um, I guess I think I've ever shared with you, but it doesn't matter that I, I just turned 86. And I, I have difficulty all the time. I mean, there's, there's continual pain. So when talks here about sufferings, I understand that. Uh, and it says that that is so small, so tiny, that doesn't compare with what I will get when I go to heaven. That's glory. I reckon that the sufferings of the present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory. Okay, let's look at the three points here from our verses. Verse 6 talks about partakers of fruit. Partakers of the fruit. Hmm. What is that? Well, it means that we ourselves will receive the same enjoyment from our labors. Done for him, done for others. Yet we ourselves do get the gain. In Deuteronomy 25 and verse 4, we read, We are not to muzzle the ox when it treads the corn. In other words, working for others, himself is a gainer. He feeds others, he himself is fed. After a spiritual manner, this is true of his service. Number two, let's look at verse 5. And verse 5 talks about crowned. Crown. What is this about a crown? Well, I don't have this on your th on your paper there, but if you turn to Revelation, uh, Revelation twenty two and verse twelve, gotta get it on my machine. It says, "And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me." to give to every man according as work shall be. So there, our Christian life will be worth all the toils and tears. And the last thing verse, is found in verse 4, when we read, He may please Him. What, a greater, what greater joy can we have than to experience a smile from the Lord Jesus? It's one thing, to have the approval of mankind, it's quite another thing to have the approval of the Lord Jesus. There is no greater joy than we can, that we can have than to, have been, than to hear the Lord Jesus say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Now, we need strength to carry this on. So we go back to verse 1, which says, My child... Strengthen yourself in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. We need to be drawn by his grace for a commission so strategic, so strenuous, so sacrificial, and so satisfying. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we do pray for the strength that we have through the grace of our Lord Jesus. We pray, Lord, that indeed this strength may be realized in us as we grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Savior, Christ Jesus. And so to this end, our Father, we pray that you will finish these thoughts in our hearts and may we go forth rejoicing 
in the salvation that we have, recognizing the strategic position and the joys that shall follow. We pray in Christ's name, amen.